All right, so I hope everybody's enjoying their weekend. Now, generally here on Sundays, I like to take a look at the week ahead of us, but I would say given all of the recent negative press surrounding Nike, I think it's time that we look at the state of sneakers, the future of sneakers as a whole collectively. Now, if you missed out, Nike recently held their earnings call, of which afterwards the results ended with Nike shares falling dramatically. This is the lowest we've seen their stock actually hit since 2001. But I think it's very clear that we have to acknowledge that Nike is definitely number one they're the leader in the industry where i want to say they brought in like 50 billion dollars worth of revenue where you compare that to number two adidas who brought in less than 25 billion the gap between number one and two is pretty dramatic but if we take things back to the 90s i would say that gap was a lot closer you had nike adidas reebok and with all of that competition i would say that kind of like you know breathed the best innovation if you take it back to the 90s i remember as a kid they were bringing out so many cool Cool different models and we can't even forget about all of the countless Jordans that MJ was rocking so as far as the 90s you know how it goes but then as we got into the 2000s I would say that gap you know definitely uh, increased dramatically where we saw Nike pretty much dominating the whole lifestyle category I can't think of anybody that wasn't rocking like retro Jordans um, retro models like Air Force Ones even outside of New York so Nike was killing that. Then you also have the whole sneaker resale bubble where people were getting into the game to flip shoes. You had Nike dropping limited pairs. You know, the rest is history. So with all of that being said, Nike, I would say that they kind of like fell back on their innovation and more so relied on the nostalgia, relied on the storytelling and everything like that. Plus, relied on these limited releases to drive up hype. So with all of that being said, I think Nike got a little ahead of themselves and they wanted to also X out the middleman and as far as the middleman that's their retail partner so rather than selling a lot of their products in stores at the malls Foot Locker, you name it. Nike opted to sell stuff directly through their sales channels, whether that's the sneakers app, nike.com, or their flagship stores. And I feel like this is a move that's really came back to bite them. Although they are able to share more of the profits when selling stuff directly to consumer, I think they're missing out on getting that word of mouth out to consumers. So what did all of their retail partners do? Like once Nike started pulling a lot of their releases, they weren't gonna sit back and just not sell sneakers anymore. What they did was they allowed other competitors, you know, to put their products on shelves. So whether that's Adidas, whether that's on Cloud, whether that's Hoka, a lot of people are trying out these new models. And I would say that they're actually impressed with the comfort, everything like that, the innovation is there. So I think that's definitely a move that Nike missed out on right there. And a lot of people, you know, word of mouth spread that a lot of these brands are good. People are trying them out, you name it. This is just your everyday average consumer, you know, not hype beasts. These are just your everyday like grandmas that walk into a mall. They're not gonna see Nikes on display. So they're gonna try other brands and they're gonna enjoy them and let their friends know about them. You guys know how that goes. So I think all of these moves have kind of came back to bite Nike in the butt. And on top of that, Nike's also losing out on that lifestyle category, which once was dominated by the Air Force One, the Nike Dunk. We're now seeing everybody rocking Sambas. Like you can't go outside without seeing people rocking a pair of Adidas Sambas. So for a brand which at the time, back in the 90s, many people believed to be leaders in innovation heading into the 2000s, it seems like Nike has really fallen back on their nostalgia and storytelling in order to sell their products and keep them at the top. So with all of that being said what is nike doing to solve this problem well we've seen this year their current ceo john donahoe he announced that he would be laying off roughly two percent of their workforce in a move which i feel like is kind of just trimming the fat you know kind of cooking the numbers by firing thousands of people I feel like it just kind of makes the numbers look a little bit better than they actually are. And on top of that, we're seeing Nike investing billions of dollars in lawsuits. So we've seen them suing these fake manufacturers, like over 50 different companies that produce fake Nike products. We're also seeing them suing and taking down YouTubers that promote fake products. And on top of that, we're seeing them suing all of these bootleggers, whether that's uh, Bape, or even more independence like Cool Kai Nike is investing billions of dollars in an attempt that what I guess you could say is protecting their retro IP, keeping it sacred. But I feel like these are the moves that we're not looking to see from Nike. People want them to just get back to the fun days when they were putting out fresh, funky, innovative new products. But rather so, it seems like Nike's current output as we take a look into 2025, 
they're just looking to pump out more classics as we got a lot of rumors a lot of classics are said to be returning even pairs we never thought nike would retro are rumored to be coming back such as stuff like the off-white 10 collection i don't know if that's a great move i know a lot of people want to see those back come back they were super limited many people would be excited for those to drop but you know how well does a pair like that translate you know with today's current fashion scene and everything like that for me i'm not super excited for those to come back but i know so many people are but with all of that being said it doesn't really feel like nike is making the moves to kind of you know take them into the future but we'll see how things play out of course as we mentioned nike is clearly the leader in the industry but if we take a look at number two in adidas we just mentioned you know they're having a moment right now with the samba but will adidas kind of fall into the same thing as nike as they rely too much on the lifestyle category with the current hit that they have in the samba and with how fast trends come and go you know could they be out of luck soon now just a few months ago we can't forget that everybody was pointing the finger at adidas for how they handled the whole yeezy situation and everything like that but it seems like people kind of forgot about all that now that Yeezys are currently on sale, we're even seeing them slashing prices, sending Yeezys to outlets and everything like that. But what's gonna happen when they run out of all of these pairs? I think a big question is, is how much inventory Adidas has left? Is this gonna be the last year that we see them dropping Yeezys or will they still be continuing to drop Yeezys heading into 2025? And given now that Adidas and Yeezy is no longer, do you feel like Adidas being is that they own all of these designs, do you feel like they're gonna let these IPs go to waste or do you see a potential rebrand in the future or something like that? I feel like the best move for Adidas now that like I think all of the controversy with Ye has kind of like blown past, would be in their best interest to maybe try to cook up some deal where they can uh, produce these retro models in which he can get his proper cut. That way everything can go, you know, smoothly. Or who knows, maybe even like pick up distribution for like future Yeezy releases um, that they're producing independently. Something like that because we know for one, Ye's not going away. And number two, we know he's uh, actually cooking up some type of footwear here in the near future. So I think uh, it may be in Adidas' best interest to potentially try to invest in that or something like that. But as y'all know, uh, that whole war situation is uh, still fresh. A lot of wounds are still open like that. So we'll see how that situation plays out. But as far as Adidas, we know they have a smash hit in the Samba, but I don't want them to follow the same route. Nike went with the Air Force One and Dunk where trends come and go so fast. Who knows, in a couple of years, the Samba could be a meme and we could see sales fall dramatically. Now, as far as like the future of footwear as a whole, you know, I think we're kind of going into this era where, you know, people are looking for more affordable, new, comfortable type of footwear. I think we've seen it like Ye kind of laid out the blueprint, you know, with his $20 Yeezy products. People weren't really looking to invest into new footwear like the pods at 200, but once he dropped that price down to 20, everybody was excited and i think that's kind of the future that we're heading into footwear i see so many people like commenting all the time on my videos that you know the economy's hurting people aren't looking to spend all this money on shoes anymore and i totally understand it i think people aren't looking to pay resale these ridiculous prices anymore and they're kind of like heading into an era now as far as sneakers where if you miss out on a release you're not paying resale and you're just gonna move on to when the next pair drops. So what I would like to see is like, you know, the time where these sneakers are dropping at like $250 and all that, that shit is dead with. I wanna see like sneakers 150 or less tops. And I think that's what caused people to go out and buy a lot more stuff. I think people are right now excited to try new products. They're just not looking to try stuff, you know, with these expensive over the head, crazy prices. So I think if these brands can get their products a lot more affordable, you know, maybe double down on innovation, comfort, but at an affordable price, I think they can uh, boost some of these numbers up. That's just my two cents. And on top of Nike, I think they need to get some of their products back into the stores, get Nikes back on people's feet because as y'all see Hoka on cloud, these other brands are starting to take up some of that market share. As far as trends, we're seeing right now the retro Y2K runner is at the top, which is why brands like New Balance, um, even Saucony, even um, Asics are dominating that space right now. And as far as Nike, the only category that they have, as far as this popular right now, I would say it would be the Vomero 5. So, Trends come and go, but as far as the future, I think it's really all about that price point and people are looking for affordable footwear. So that's just my two cents here on this Sunday. Let me know what you guys think and what do you guys feel like is the future of sneakers? Do you feel like Nike will continue to dominate 
do you feel like Adidas will kind of like, you know, break even a little bit more with that gap? Or do you think things will just continue as they are? And what do you guys think about the future of Yeezy? Do you feel like Adidas has a lot more pairs to drop? Do you feel like this is it? Or potentially they may work out some kind of future deal with Ye. Make things right. It's only wishful thinking at this point, but let me know what y'all think down below. If you enjoyed this little Sunday sneaker discussion, please help support the channel by hitting that thumbs up button. So I'm J.A. I will catch you guys tomorrow. In the meantime, stay safe, stay blessed, and I'm out, y'all. Love.